That car is just ridiculously impressive, in my opinion. Uh, how you guys doing? If you can hear me, give me a quick sound check. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, you guys can hear me. I wanted to just play that video real quick. And I got a bunch of other videos to play for you guys. Um, but just give me a quick sound check. Make sure that you can hear me. And then um, there's a couple of videos I want to play. Not only do I want to play that one, but I also wanted to talk about the in-car video. We have some in-car video that I'm going to try to pull up. And it was interesting to see for the first thing that stood out to me anyway, was how freaking smooth, how freaking smooth everything looked in terms of, in terms of um, John's demeanor, right? John is a, a pilot. Uh, for those of you that don't know, you know, he, most of his career was um, being a pilot. So it's funny because the guy is very good at um, routine and what to touch and what to do and everything. And it was really cool to see him um, in his element, just kind of handling it like 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 it wasn't an issue. So let me see if I can pull up the video where he's just up there, just you know, hanging out, having a good old time, and he's not really stressing shit. Let me keep the, this. like sick i'm sorry seven uh 760 or 780 it, it's funny because we had a bit of a voltage issue and the thing still ran an insanely good number and john was very calm behind the wheel like it was very just like now i don't have video of him in the car during the 749 pass um and it was kind of nice to see um that we got all the proper shots uh we needed to see to kind of you know, see what's going on from the left side, from the right side, and from the end of the track. So a lot of you guys that have been around a car of that caliber, man, you need a lot of people to have your back when it comes to screwing with a car like that. Like like literally screwing with a car like that to turn it around, to make sure you go through everything, to make sure you get the ice in it, the fuel in it, all that stuff. It's it's a decent amount of work, so it's nothing to, to sneeze at. So if you decide to get after it on a car at that caliber, remember, you need, you need some friends or employees to make sure you turn that car around in a, in a timely fashion. Very cool to go to the Hail Mary Derby. And this is what I came out of the Hail Mary Derby thinking, right? The people that know, like the people that know, that are in the know, gave us the respect. Like they were just like... You know, they, they ask those questions that people really want to know. They say, hey, uh, what computer uh, are you using to run this thing? And John Jr., me or senior say control pack. So essentially a stock computer uh, pared down to get rid of all the body control module stuff. It's forward OEM stuff. And they go, what trans? And we're like, well, 6R80 with a 4R200 hub from Power by the Hour. And then they go, what boost controller? AMS 2000. They were expecting to hear Haltech. They were expecting to hear Motec. They were expecting to hear Holly. They were expecting to hear one of the big standalone ones. There's nothing wrong with those. But the reason, in my opinion, why the Grey Goose and the Blue Goose is the absolute the most impressive um, OEM equipped vehicle is because of that. It's OEM control pack, OEM style trans, <coughs> and the car is nothing special. That means you. Yes, you can build a vehicle like this and run it on the stock operating system. Now, the Grey Goose is using Gen 2 stuff, meaning Tricore 15 and up stuff, but it is Ford OEM stuff. That tune, we can copy-paste onto the Blue Goose. Now, it took five days, and that's what a lot of people don't realize. It took five days to make a tune that we can copy paste a lot of people out there say oh lund racing copy paste tunes so we buy a vehicle thirty five thousand dollars get a blower get the injectors spend the time get the calibration on the money and then we constantly upgrade that calibration throughout our lives and people go copy paste copy paste yeah the investment is like a hundred thousand dollars and then after we're all said and done Junior or I or Brandon can say, well, do you want to really get after it? What size are your turbos? What size is the math? What fuel pumps do you have? 
boom, this tune went 749. I'm going to dial in your math, dial in your injectors, make sure everything's kosher and happy, and it is up to you to get it down the track, but the tune is going to be on point. A lot of people don't realize that. So what did it cost Lund Racing to get that tune dialed in? Well, five employees, Brandon, Dakota, me, junior, seniors, and employee. And Cheryl actually did come down for the last day, which was nice to see. She saw, she saw her man, you know, go down the, go down the, the track. That was kind of cool. And so what did it cost? Five days from Tuesday to Sunday of nothing but racing, racing, and racing. And we did, I don't know, probably eight passes. And ice, food, hotel, everything to get you guys, potentially, a tune that is insanely well-vetted, race oriented that you can dump in your OEM style computer. How can you, I mean, seriously, how, how can you beat that? So a lot of people don't understand what goes on in the background. Now, the other thing that happens every single time Lund Racing resets a record because this record was taken from Darren Baker at uh, Amish, Amish Gappa uh, on Instagram. Um, he went 763 in his S550 with a 6R80 conventional six speed uh, trans. And we, the goal was take it right back. Um, and basically, that's what we did. We did a 749 at 189. The next pass where we had some voltage issues was going to be probably a 39 because the front half was so much better. But then we ran into some voltage issues. We ended up having an issue with an alternator, and we just lost voltage mid-run, mid and the throttle closed. But the front half was so dumb that I don't even want to talk about it because the, the thing I hate the most is when people say, it has so much left in it. It has so much left in it. Uh, okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say, I'm going to show you how much it has in it. I'm going to show you the slip when it goes to Texas 2K and say, look, everyone else is running a Holly. Everyone's running, and this guy does it on a stock OEM style computer and it gets it done. Edwin Martinez, you might end up getting that file if... You can figure it the right way. I'm telling you, this, if you have an AMS 2000, um, this in a 4R200 with a Gen 2 control pack, which you don't have, um, this thing straight up gets it and it rapes. Now, the plan is this. That car just needs the voltage issues figured out. It just needs um, uh, some cooling issues figured out. And then we're going to get back in Texas 2K. But what I was talking about before that is the people that hate the most on this car in my opinion, are people that either are or were customers. That's the whole crazy thing that goes on. I go, wait a minute. This guy's talking shit on us, kind of subtle, subtle. You know, that, 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 that backwoods, nobody talks shit to our face. No fucking way. They do it on Facebook, now Parlor. Apparently, conservatives need a fucking safe space. <laughs> what, a, what a shit show that is. <clears throat> and these guys... Go out there and say, oh, but it's not really a 6R80. Oh, it's not really, uh, it's not really OEM anymore because you negated all the gears. And I'm like, if you take a T56 and remove 6 and 5th, face plated, pro shifted, dog this, shit that, slipper clutch, it's still a T56. No one says, oh, it's a T40. No, T56 with 5th and 6th removed. 6R80 with 4R200 hub. But people, for whatever reason, whether they're friends with a tuner, used to be employed by us, talk or current current customers that, for whatever reason, fall into the mindset of one dickhead's fucking opinion, they go, yeah, it's not really 6R80. So we're like, okay, we don't care. Here's a 749. You do not have shit for that. You don't have shit for a 749. A 749 at 190 pretty much and we know it can go a 20 or a 30 with a 6R80, a Ford factory style control pack, and about 40 pounds of boost. That's really hard to beat. And I was really proud of everyone involved. John Jr., Brandon, Dakota, Sr. for piloting the craft, starting the company, pretty much doing the whole thing. Cheryl, Johnny Nardi, Tyler, the guys taking care of the shit back home so that we can go out there and uh, get it done. That was really cool to see. It's really nice. But yeah, the hate is one of those things that I laugh at. I go, Really? And the guys that hate it are slow motherfuckers, like nine, ten, nine, nine second motherfuckers, 10 second motherfuckers. I'm like, if you got, and, and this is what pisses me off the most, is what they don't say that shit to your face. Come up to our face and say, that's not really 6R80, your record's invalid. 
And then I'll say, oh, okay, well, if it's that easy, how come you don't do it, you JLTNA 12-5 having ass motherfucker? Fuck out of here. It happens all the fucking time. And you know what? This is why I'm here. I'm here to check those guys because they're full of shit. I'm here to tell them, they're, you know, to defend the company. I'm here to kind of explain to the dumb asses because, look, guys, a lot of coyote guys are dumb ass motherfuckers. Hell, some of the fastest racers you know are dumb ass motherfuckers. That's a standalone seems to save their life. It is an interesting dynamic how that all went about. But, hey, look, 749 at 1. 90 basically 189 and change we know it has it in it we know it's going to run a, a 720 or 730 by the time it's all said and done and we're just going to enjoy that so what i want to put in the little scrolling text here for the people that do not believe that the 4 200 is a 6 r80 i'm reminding you the 4 200 is still a 6 r80 just like trump is still your president as of now right now <laughs> trump is still your president Remember those people dancing in the street when Biden was uh, anointed by Fox News that he won? Uh, uh, and then imagine that they find voter fraud and then they're like, they got to like, like take it back. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> you got to dance that shit back dancing in the street. Oh, that's going to be a good time. That's going to be a real good time. But anyway, you guys will see us at Texas UK. We're going to bring potentially both gooses out. Gray Goose and the Blue Goose, uh, it's probably going to be a thing. So we're going to see if that uh, comes to fruition. I'm going to go in a capacity of just crewing because if you're going to bring both Gooses, it's going to need a bunch of crew action. So I'm sure we're going to be there full force. If it happens, I don't know. Apparently, once Biden was elected, COVID went away, but then it came back. <laughs> That was an interesting thing. So uh, real quick, uh, Poor Boy 313 says, take, take my money. Now, last week, I put out a couple of videos because I wanted to really start getting after it with the cars. And I bought um, some skinny street screet, screet grit sauce, whatever. And a lot of people hit me up. And thankfully, they said, hey, Alex, you should do this. You should do that. Try this. Try that. Everyone was very cool. A lot of people were like, dude, I, I you know, you're, you're trying shit. Why not try a bias ply? Try some concrete. Try some stuff. I said, okay, no problem. Then I said, let me try some different compounds. But I wanted to buy them. Why? Because if I am given a compound and then give it a bad review, I think that is a bad, bad look. I think it's a really bad look and I'm more responsible than that. So if I do buy something, uh, at least I can say, I didn't like it that great or it didn't work for me or it didn't work for my application or I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. So so I bought the following. I bought Stripper Glitter and the guys were actually really good. I hit them up on uh, Facebook. I said, hey, Stripper Glitter, uh, do you guys have um, a product I can buy? Or, and they're like, yeah, hey, we'll give you one. I said, no, 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 I love you guys. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. They were so nice. I said, just you know, hook me up with a shirt. That's it. I'll buy a product, hook me up with a shirt. And they did. Very nice of them. So I have Stripper Glitter on deck. I also have... Um, Pimp Juice, Br Kyle Brandon, daddy, sent me Pimp Juice. So now I have three products I have to test. So I'm going to try to make a video that that is all I do. I get the red car out there. Now, I think the drag radio is hurting me. I think the drag radio is hurting me. I could keep trying on a drag radio, but the problem is I'm on asphalt. And not that good of asphalt. Very porous, porous asphalt. And, not, and I'm going to have to go through two or three sets of tires to lay enough rubber down to see if these compounds work at all. Because you got to have some rubber down, right? You can't just go out there on virgin asphalt and go, okay, yeah, let's try this product. Because it will actually make the tire greasy. So I'm going to probably try a bias ply tire. I'll get some uh, Family Dollar Stars from Family Dollar and some Who's Your DOTs on the IRS. And fuck around for street stuff only. And then try the stripper glitter. I'll try the uh, skinny secret sauce and the pimp juice. I'll try all three and I'll see how that goes. If I can somehow find a spot where I can do a burnout on concrete and launch the thing, I'll try my best to do that. But it might be a little bit before I get that done. So that was it. That was the opening monologue. Congrats to London Racing 749. There is another gentleman that ran a seven second um, ET uh, built by Paramount Speed. And we ended up, uh, he ended up going 760s. He's from the DFW area. Uh, I don't remember the guy's name, but um, he was, the car was built by Paramount Speed. And we tune it because Paramount Speed became a dealer and they're awesome. And they've been great to work with. We have had 
a lot of orders come through and we appreciate uh, the DFW guys supporting the Lund Racing customers in that area. And uh, that car ended up going 760s with a power glide. Pretty badass. <clears throat> okay, uh, Devin Mar says, shout out to Brandon for getting my GT350 manifold LU47 comp camp stage three. Really? Really? I love you. You don't have to list every single one of your mods. All you have to do is say, shout out to Brandon for hooking me up with a nice tune on my modded car. Oh my God. AI combo dialed in for the first time. We'll be getting lost for E85 flex tune soon. Extremely happy with how the car drive. Top end is insane. Uh, but is the throttle body ported? Because apparently we are getting a rash of people that are still porting their throttle bodies. If you haven't, if you are a customer of mine or ours, and I and you hear my show and you still get a ported throttle body, I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I really don't know what to tell you. I, Oh, it's idling high. Okay, what happened? I ported the throttle body. Bye. Put a stock one back in. It doesn't idle high anymore. Ain't that some shit? Oh, but you got to tune it. Why do I have to tune a leaky, malfunctioning throttle body? The fuck am I going to do that for? <laughs> I swallow cum says, you come in a little too hot, Alex. A little too high powered, fool. <laughs> Tell you, you coming in a little too high, man. What is that? We come in a little too That video. And now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's a video of the Cali racing guys. And it's great. It's great. The guy had an issue with a race and he came back and he was, yo, he was, he was amped up. He's like, yo, uh, yo, we got to do that shit again. I'm going to make sure you cover. And <laughs> another guy from the other crew was like, yo, you coming in a little too high, man. She, <laughs> it's the wonderful video. I wouldn't change anything about that video. It was, it was perfect beginning to end. It was drama. It's great. Um, but yeah, I swallow come says, tell you and your family to HTFU. Hola, bitch. Yo. Hit head the fuck up. Head the fuck up. Hash brown the, the fuck up. Uh, HTFU in the house. SK Performance Channel Support. We love your show. SK Performance Chef. I received your parts. They're awesome and amazing. I wish I I brought them. I forgot to bring them. Uh they're at par by the hour. I went there. Um and I totally forgot to bring them in. And I love what you did with the uh, timing chain guides. It's great. I'll, if I have some time or if I can step away for like, if y'all give me a minute or two, I might be able to get it if it's on the car. But I don't want to have dead air for a while. Because, you know, if I start doing dead air, people that are copying the show will start saying, well, maybe I have to do dead air. Maybe I have to stop talking. <laughs> I get a soundboard, they get a soundboard. We get blue lights, they get blue lights. If I put a chin dildo on and start banging, uh, 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 <laughs> what are those fake asses that you can that you can fuck? Uh, if I get a chin dildo and start doing that, that show will start doing that shit too. Fuck originality. Let's just copy what Alex does. Orlando Chavez, give me five bucks and say a goddamn thing. My favorite type of question. Uh, Jesus Del Rio says, what does bicho mean? means dick in Spanish. Matthew Goodall says, 11.4 at 120? Fuck, from, down from 11.90. He's got you some great logs yesterday. Taquache, hope you you and KC526 had a good time up north at HMD. Now, nah, she's laid up. She had some knee surgery. She had some complications. Uh, hopefully, she recovers real well. Dude, 11.4 in your car? I have hope for myself. Good for you. I, I can't wait to get to the track. Matthew Goodall, 11.4 with a 4C converter. That car is some weight reduction away and some, like, I don't know, maybe a couple parts away from 10's NA on a 6R80. Congrats. Badass shit. I'd love to see those logs. I swallow the cum says, I got everything worked on with Aldo. He's building my kit right now. 1000X package, I believe. Going to ship the car out there from Sa San Diego or South Dakota. He's a sick dude, too. He's a good dude. Yeah, I like him. He's a, he's a worker, man. He's cut from a different cloth. Uh, Black Motors Matter says, split between getting an 11 to 12 GT500 or 20, 20 GT manual PP1 for a street driven play toy. What's your thoughts? Keep up the great content. Honestly, oh, those are, oh, the Coyote is always going to make more power. Sorry, Shelby guys. The Coyote is always going to, unless the Shelby motor is built, you're not going to have the capabilities of making the kind of power the Coyote stock can make. That's why I'm blown away that there's still 7.3 and 6.8 guys saying that they can't wait to get their hands on it. You can't wait to get your hands on a motor. You have to open up to make it go quick. You can't wait to get your hands on a motor to put a cam head intake package on. But a Coyote, you shove boost in the 85 and you're done. By the way, my source at Ford, my source at Ford says no freaking way 
a 6.8 ends up in a Mustang. Again, my source at Ford, who told me about the GT500, who told me about the blower, told me about the DCT, told me about, showed me pictures of uh, everything, how it's being built. He said to me that S650, Alex, will not have the 6.8, only the F150 will, which he hasn't been wrong yet, so we'll see if he actually is on the money with that one. San Diego, he said, I Swallow Come is from San Diego, got it. <clears throat> um, David Santos said, uh, okay, out of those two, I get the 2020 GT, G, uh, GT. 2020 GT manual, fuck around, and uh, you'll be happy. You'll be a happy guy, trust me. David Santos says, I got a Gen 1 5 liter with a VMP Gen 2R and a 79 millimeter pulley with twin 67 throttle bodies. Um, any idea why it stalls when I clutch in? VMP sent the fix, but didn't really work. Can't wait to get the lunch sauce, bro. I know what exactly the, fi the fix is. It's nothing to do with throttle. Again, it's nothing to do with throttle. It's nothing to do with how slow the rate of decay is. It is not that. We have the fix. We have the fix. We have the fix, David Santos, 100%. Um, leave it to Beaner. Must have just gotten off from fucking a dead person. Says I have a 13 GT500. About to sell that fucking pig and build the nasty GT. You could do that. But why not build, leave it to Beaner, the GT500? Like, what are your goals? Nines? Tens? What are your goals? Right? I think you should definitely probably keep that GT500 because it's probably already paid off because then you're going to have to buy GT and then throw another 40 into it to make it, you know, into the eights. So maybe sevens. So, and then, you know, I, you, you have a GT when you have a 13 GT500, at least some old fuck will like it. It's worth more, worth more money because it's a premium Mustang. So it'll be interesting. Um, if, why don't you just build the 13 GT500? That's what I'm saying. Why don't you just build that? I, I would I would rather build the 13 GT500 because you already have it. Um, Matthew Goodall says, it was unbelievable night, brother. Was hoping for 11.7, so to turn 11.4s was fucking gold. Dude, congratulations. I can't wait to see what my 6F does. I'm either going to break an axle or run 11.2 or 11.1. That's the goal. Um, Yonce 50 says, what spark plug do you recommend for boosted or nitrous? NGK 6510s? Yes, Yonce 50. NGK 6510s to me is like the small block Chevy of spark plugs. It kind of goes anywhere in, in, in coyote land. You could use it for, um, uh, you could use it for boost, NA, and uh, nitrous. Let me take this stupid scrolling text off because it's bugging me. Um, but yeah, it's kind of one of those plugs you could use for anything, uh, with nitrous. I, I suggest a 32,000 scap and with a boost, depending on how high the boost Start at 28 and when in doubt, gap it down. Casey 526, my moderators on the chat. She says, Fletcher Schrott would post the link to the video in the comments as soon as this video is uploaded. Promise. I don't know what they're talking about. Wonder Racing LLC. By the way, I'm sorry, Keith. Keith, I apologize. The person responsible for the gray goose is Keith Ray. Keith built the Grey Goose top to bottom, built the motor, built the turbo kit, built everything minus the rear end and the chassis, everything else, the electrical, uh, the gas tank, uh, how I was, I was put in, how the fuel pumps were situated, how the electrical was run. Everything was built by Wonder Racing Keith Ray, and it made it possible to go 749, and it made it look easy. We know that car has a 20 or a 30 in it eventually. With the same setup, it's just a matter of front halfing the car a little better. Again, Keith, I apologize for not mentioning you. I don't do that on purpose. Uh, he says, haters make it so much better. Lund Racing doing it big. The thing is, Keith, that the haters are 90% of the time Lund Racing customers. That blow, and they do it on the on the low, low. They do it on the low, low. I hate that. I would respect you more if you came to my face and said, I don't like you, fuck you, and suck my dick get ready to get slapped but i would respect you a little bit if you came up to my face but no they do it from really far away really far away from the comfort of their own fucking keyboard and i'm like damn you know step up they don't they never do they never do final fixing company says hey alex please let everyone know who ordered that their orders are being shipped Already shipped this week. Thank you. Hey, guys, thank you very much for fulfilling a pre-order with Vinyl Freaks and Company. I'm going to make sure I put the proper link in the description because I think I messed up your link. But if you guys want to have some of my apparel, FBO shirts, that dating channel shirts, everything, Vinyl Freaks and Company is a place to get it done. I'm glad that you guys were able to fill an order and you get some shipped. Awesome. I didn't think it would sell, but apparently people want some FBO shirts and those are like a hot seller. Um, awesome. But Keith, again... 
props to you for building an insanely badass ride, and I'd love for you to drive it at Texas 2K. You'll have a lot of fun. Um, jo Jordan Fetfasis. Fetfasis. You're stealing blue background lights, I see. I am stealing blue background lights. These are purple, by the way. These are purple. Uh, so next show, the, that person will have them purple and more a, a better soundboard and no content. <laughs> no content. Um, Matthew Goodall says, fuck them stock axles. Yeah, I, I'm probably going to fucking blow them up, brother. Um, Alex, root beer super chat you skipped. Thank you very much, very much. Hola, Micho. I, I'm sure this is an old question, but here it is anyway. Are ported head worth it on a Gen 2 NA? No. Honestly, no. Now, porting companies are going to be like, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Okay, porting company, buy a Mustang, get it tuned, port the heads, put it on with the same tune because you do not need to upgrade the tune or add more fuel to the tune if you port the heads, port the manifold, or anything of that nature. If you're adding airflow, the mass airflow sensor is scaled for more airflow. That's why we ask you to do idle, slow rev, and watt logs. It's already scaled through all the cells. So, porting company, if you know so much shit about coyote heads, why don't you buy a coyote, tune it yourself because you know so fucking much, put on a set of ported heads, and show me the difference. And when you show me an 8 to 10 horsepower difference with stock cams for a $1,500 job, I'm going to ask you to justify that kind of work. I'm going to ask you to justify that kind of work. I don't think it's worth it. I don't think it's worth it, honestly. I don't think it's worth porting a stock manifold, NA. I don't think it's porting anything anywhere because bang for the buck, right? Bang for the buck. What are you getting for that port job? 20 horse? No, you're getting eight. You're getting six. You can vary that kind of horsepower on a back-to-back -back run on the same car, same tune, same day. You can make 425 and then make 430, same day. So how do you measure how much more that ported manifold, ported throttle body, ported Cobra Jet made, ported heads made? You don't. When are ported heads worth it? When you go max effort. I'm saying Cobra Jet, big stupid cams, 8,500 plus RPMs. Then we're starting to talk about porting heads. But most of you won't need that shit. Most of you are just pump gas fags that just do dumb shit on the street and you'll never need a ported head or will never feel the difference of a ported head. You'll just be able to say, well, my head's reported. And then you're like, well, well how much did you gain? Oh, <laughs> oh I don't know. Um, Nick Gurr says, oh, no. <laughs> you got me, Nick G-R-R. <laughs> Fucking asshole. <laughs> uh, Nicholas G-R-R says, my God, he got me there. Uh, how's the shift forks holding up on your 19? Did you ever get the new Mantic clutch? No, no Mantic clutch for the car. And the clutch, are, the, the, the forks are fine. You can tell the clutch is starting to let go on the 19. When I launch, the pedal gets really soft. And I'm like, that, this clutch is on its way out. So let's go ahead and uh, nip that in the bud. So I'm probably going to get a, I'm probably going to shoot. I'm, I don't know if I'm going to get a Mantic just yet. I'm going to talk to Ben Calmer, see what he suggests for these Gen 3 MT82s. Um, High Swallow comes says, Alex, do you listen to Blade? I don't know what that is. Blade, uh, Bladey? No, I don't know what that is, brother. Sorry. I do not, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, they got me good. <laughs> they got he got me good with that name. I mean, I, I you got it. <laughs> oh man, <clears throat> uh, pump gas facts make a shirt. I see. I probably shouldn't even said that word because you know what's gonna happen with YouTube. So enjoy the show while it's up because for I, I'm sure YouTube's gonna go. Yeah, we can't say that. It's just a bundle of sticks, guys. Relax. Uh, don't forget to bring a towel. Towelies in the house. Don't forget to bring a towel. Mantics are hella expensive. El Coyote, they're not cheap. So I'm actually looking into a McLeod, McLeod's. Because, okay, if you look at the word McLeod, right? Like, okay, what's the guy's name in Die Hard? Die Hard character. It's like McLean? John McLean. Yeah, McLean. But when you look at the word McLeod, like the clutches, it doesn't make sense. I mean, McLeod, McLeod. I mean, when, when you look at the word McLeod, it doesn't make sense, right? Uh, M-C-L-E-O-D, McLeod, McLeod, <laughs> McLeod, not McLeod, Oud, A-U-D sound, McLeod. 
<laughs> it's it's a mech mecha load. It's so stupid. Change your fucking name. <laughs> okay. Can't justify spending that much on a clutch. I get it. I get it. I get it. Um, Kyle Brandon says, Kyle Brandon, what's up, brother? Daddy, King Daddy. He says, but, but Alex, what happens when I port my ass? Exactly. You guys are just, for whatever reason, you fell into the porting trap. Everyone, for whatever reason, says, well, I, I need a tune for a ported manifold. Then I'm like, did someone show you gains like a 30 or 20 horsepower gain on a ported manifold that made you go, I need it? I don't. I'm not going to port anything. I'm just going to go boost. More boost. Like a lot of people, for whatever reason, get a ported throttle body and matched manifold. And I'm like, you put it in, put it on a dyno, it made 10 more. How much did it cost to port throttle body in that for 10 more horse, which can vary on the dyno about six? So did you really get four? So weird. So weird to me how people spend money on stupid ass, stupid ass dumb shit. Pragmatic Lunatic says, uh, yo, brother, I haven't heard, I haven't been around lately due to some off-field issues, but I still enjoy the show when I get a chance to channel support. Thank you, Pragmatic Lunatic. What's that mean? What's that mean? Did you forget to pay child support and your wife uh, put you in jail? <laughs> XY. What? That's a weird statement. Charles Fuller says, Brandon, tune my Hellion Twin Turbo 10 RD car today on E85. Done in three logs. Going to get this trans out to midnight performance this winter. Love for the win. Yeah, man. The tunes are, again, copy-paste. Because we spend $100,000 to copy-paste. We spend big money to copy-paste. So every time you we copy-paste a tune to you, that motherfucker has been vetted up the asshole. Because we've, we've had the combo. F-150 S550 says, It's because Taquaches need retunes on their chebbies. Fuck, fuck a push rod. Oh my god, I have a guy on my shit right now that is like, you're so stupid. You, you're such a. Someone called me a coyote. Ch oh my god, let's get started on this shit, right? Someone called me a coyote cheerleader, right? Okay, so let me ask you guys. Let me ask you guys. I'll ask you guys. For ninety nine point nine nine percent of the people, why would you upgrade, upgrade, a coyote? block to an iron block over a sleeved aluminum by the way seniors is a sleeved aluminum block keith ray's not a coyote but it's a 5-4 sleeved aluminum block he goes sixes guys he goes sixes why would anyone give two shits about a coyote that is iron block you know who does 10 second guys nine second guys motherfuckers living at 900 wheel talking about oh Iron block's better. And I'm like, for what? When you go sixes? Oh, iron block's better. <laughs> a, sleeved, a sleeved aluminum block, 2,000 horse. We did the calculations on the Grey Goose. We're probably pushing 2,000 horsepower. No signs of that fucker breaking in half. Things chilling. But we got guys that just, for whatever reason, think they know shit. And they try to chime in. And I'm like, no, you're looking real stupid right now. But they don't listen. So I love to make fun of them. That's my job. And people go, well, I can't believe you know, you're know you out there making fun of them. Guys, how the fuck do you, how the fuck do you think I, get here? I got here? You think I got here by like working my, going to tuning school and graduating tuning school and busting my chest? Fuck no. I talked shit. I talked shit to get here. And do you think I'm going to stop talking shit while I'm here? You must got me fucked up, bitch. Uh, Slow ST says... 2020 GT500 or 2020 RS3? Really? What kind of a stupid ass question is that? What's better bank for the buck? What? I finally got to catch a life since COVID made people stupid. What? It must have made you a little stupid, slow ST. A 2020 GT500 or a 2020 RS3 that has the worst blower variant of the TVS on the planet called the Roush Blower? Dude, love you, Slow ST. The GT500 is a way better buy, by far, than a 2020 RS3. I guarantee Roush is hurting because that GT500 is out there doing pretty well. And the RS3 blower sucks cocks and dicks made with the 200 IAT. Shutting the throttle at 150 type shit. Dude, seriously, not even close. 2020 GT500. <clears throat> Icewallow comes says stock 10 or 80. Fine to run 950 to 1000 on Aldo's kit. Tuned by you. No launches at all, just street rolls. Don't rolls, please, till I can build it. Ah, 950 is, to 1,000 is pushing it. 
on a roll because you're 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 just gonna stay in it. If the guy's next to you, you're just gonna stay in it all the way and just gonna blow shit up. Honestly, I'd like to be in the 800 range to 900 range, not 950 to a thousand. Drag racing is different. Eight seconds of fun. Rolls are back to back to back to back. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna roll. He beat you. You beat him. Then you do it again. Then you do it again. Honestly, I don't like that kind of power on a stock motor for a sustained period of time. I swallow. Senat versus the world gave me $10 and didn't say a goddamn thing. I love him. <clears throat> uh, Adre Ratana says, thanks for the guidance on the last show on the Cold Star Misfire. I narrowed it down to the direct injection injectors. That was for a BMW N54. Hey, awesome. Good to good to be able to help on a platform that I'm not familiar with. I appreciate that. Adre. <clears throat> uh, T-Top GT. In a 40 mile per hour roll race, six speed second, six speed second, S550, 2650 VMP blower, 79 millimeter pulley, blah, 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 versus a HCI Turbo Fox body, 580 wheel, and 3100 race wheel with a five speed driver mod. Who do you think would win? Uh, T Top GT, the Fox body will fuck your ass so hard. <laughs> it will fuck you dry, not even give you the courtesy of spitting on it. 3100 pounds. He's going to fuck your ass so bad. So bad. Hemorrhoid city. Pull out. Hemorrhoids on his dick. Shit on his dick. It's going to be bad. He is going to fuck you up real, real bad. Don't do it. Don't do it. You will lose. You will lose. Just concede. If you paid, uh, if you if you locked it in, pay the punk out fee. Pay the punk out fee. You're going to get beat. Uh, Pragmatic Lunatic says, getting divorced, bro. Hasn't been pretty, but luckily for me, I don't have the kids to pay for. Hey, Pragmatic Lunatic, you might want to check out my, my dating channel. I got a lot of good advice there. <laughs> Shit. How to get my 93 Super Coupe Thunderbird in the nines. Uh, sell it for a Coyote Swap Fox body and you're in. Edna Martinez says, Alex, would you race drive the goose? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Look. Yes. I would race drive the Blue Goose, but I think Keith Ray would do a better job at that. Keith Ray driving the Blue, the Gray Goose, going rounds, senior, I'm sorry, Keith Ray driving the Gray Goose going rounds, senior Blue Goose going rounds, and junior driving the Black Bean? Woo, that's going to be a good time down in Texas. Fox Body's a fucking king daddy, man. Absolutely. You're talking to me about a 3,100-pound Fox Body, a 580 wheel? That's fucking evil. Got to stuff a 275 back there and rape your ass. You rape your ass. It's not going to be pretty. Um, 3,100 pounds is kind of heavy for a Fox body. kind of is. What are you talking about? My Fairmont is 3,400 pounds with me in it. It's not light. Anthony Martinez says, I got a ported Cobra Jet Stage 3 comps and 331s. A good setup. A good setup. What the fuck? Good setup for rolls? Sure, Anthony. <laughs> Sounds awesome. Uh, what, what if the Fox body's on street tires, though? Then he's a retard. If, oh, street tires like... A drag radio is a street tire. A ET Street R is a street tire. ET Street SS is a street tire. He can fuck you up. Um, Ruby GT says power limit of a Gen 3 52 rods pistons non sleeve. Power limit of a Gen 3 52. Gen 3 52. You're are you talking uh, uh are you talking about a um a GT350 Ruby GT? Is that what you're asking about? A, a GT350 or a Gen 3 52 like like a GT500? We've had GT500s make 1,200 horse, and they've been pretty good. <clears throat> uh, KC526 says, check out Alex's That Dating Channel Wednesday, same time, 8 p.m. Eastern. Tomorrow, 8 p.m. We'll talk some shit on, on women. <laughs> Alex, go help Derek Barron figure out why his Gen 1 Coyote that's making 720 wheel is misfiring, and I couldn't imagine why. Uh, plus, lo puts lotion on himself. John Lana, in the house, give me $50. You didn't have to give, you've given me enough, <laughs> especially after yesterday. You've given us enough. I really appreciate John Lana. By the way, congrats. Killer, killer job this weekend. You did, you done good. You made, you made this old man proud. You did real good in the car. Look, look like we've done it before. Burnouts were on point. Staging was on point. We look like we know what the fuck we're doing. And that's half of the, that's half the goal. Get up there. Look like you know what you're doing. You know, have the crew switch, you know, turn the car around real quick. It was a good time. Will stage one Gen three comp cams work in Gen two heads? I have a Gen one motor. Gen one, two, and Gen one and two heads are interchangeable. It's about the cam phasers, right? Meaning you could put a Gen one cam on a Gen two head in a Gen one car. You could put a Gen one cam. You could put a Gen. You can't. You can't put a. You can't put a Gen two cam. Yeah, you could put a Gen two cam in a Gen one. I think. But what would you want to do that? 
Basically, you can put a Gen 2 cam in a Gen 1 with Gen 1 cams and phasers and have it work. Yes. Timothy uh, Deceptive, give me $5. Didn't say a damn thing. <clears throat> Timothy Fush says, hey, Alex, in your opinion, which throttle body do you recommend for an NA Cobra Jet setup on the 2019 A10? I'm looking at the VMP Twin 69. Do you have a different recommendation? I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to get off of the Twin 69 bandwagon. I'm going to go back to the good old trusty CJ65. Why? Never had an issue now the problem with running a cj65 on a gen 3 car is you need an adapter and the adapter's 400 bucks it's not cheap jms sells it so if you get a cj65 throttle body a jms adapter i would run that on a gen 3 car all day long now why am i off of the c the, the tj69 bandwagon <clears throat> well there's some customers i've know i've seen have had some issues with them now good for vmp for doing a solid and replacing them but honestly i've never seen an issue with the cj65 like ever 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 so what do i recommend as your tuner is something that you have to touch less so that would be a cj65 but it's going to run you more money because you have to run the jms adapter to have it operate properly on the gen 3 sir force induction drive gave me ten dollars didn't say a damn thing love it ernie g gave me five bucks didn't say a damn thing love it uh, slow st says ha 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 thank you for that good laugh had to prove a point to my boss claiming he'd rather get an rs3 over the g500 and now i get to show this to him thank you alex the rs3 used to be good when you'd compare it to <clears throat> i don't know what gen 2 rs3s are stout uh 15 to 17 but what were their competition on ford ford didn't have a direct competitor right nothing else was boosted manual back in the day except the roush and that was like the best you can get now that the 2020 gt500 or the gt500 is back in 2020 roush with that shit ass blower that's on their shit i wouldn't trust it now if you get a roush rs3 and somehow put a whipple on it that'd be kind of funny um i'd still take the gt500 actually a 10r80 a 10r80 whipple rs3 i would take over a GT500, but, but, I still think the GT500 in the long run, once we get TCM access, will be a better vehicle. Hell, and a road course, I don't think the Roush RS3 has a shot over the GT500 based on that trans, not even close. It brought it to a whole nother level. <clears throat> Senior should have went fly tonight, okay? Uh, John Lund says, love you, Alex. Love you too. Edward Martinez says, will both Gooses stay 6R? One will make the jump eventually. Edward Martinez... You and I both know, Edward Martinez, if the gray or blue goose had a glide in it, it'd be a 720 car tonight. Now, we're going 80s, 70s, 60s, 50s, and 40s. We bypassed 60s and went right to 49. Imagine a glide in that with a favorable starting line ratio, Edward Martinez. 720s would not be a problem. And we might tickle sixes eventually if we lose some weight on one of the cars so you know the deal one of them will absolutely have to become a glide car or we just say fuck it we'll swing dicks and say we're 6r80 factory control stuff because 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 we can because we can who else is even trying deep sevens that's that's special gtr guys were going up to us like what there was a guy next to us with a motorcycle more racing guys a badass 630s at 230 with a no no wheelie bar bike and he was like what the fuck's done to this car and we're like you're asking us what's done and you just went six something and you're asking us what's done to this car he's like yep and we're like oh you know this and this and he's like wow he was legit impressed he goes factory style computer yeah factory style trans yeah 3400 pounds yeah he was like damn he gets it racers get it most internet warriors don't need iron block you need an iron block you need an iron block fuck out of here <clears throat> okay he says which one of the two geese is faster both being on kill i'm gonna be honest with you i think blue goose has it covered now gray goose i'm gonna talk to junior real quick because remember gray goose gray goose was a, a fluid equipped turbo car and the last person who drove the fluid equipped version of the gray goose was Dasan? May he rest in peace, Dasan. Um, so, the gray goose, the, the gray goose, uh, last uh, the last pass it made on the seven forty nine pass, according to Junior, it the sixty to one thirty, meaning the sixty to one thirty. If you were to draggy it, but we weren't draggying it; we were actually measuring it. 
<coughs> that has a, the AMS has a G meter and everything. The 60 to 130 was completed in 2.28 seconds, right? On the 749 pass. On the, on the last pass where we had voltage issues, it did it in 2.16. 60 to 130. It was going to be a 29 or a 73 pass with a shit ass 1.260 foot. I, that Grey Goose is making all the fucking jam, a ton of power. But I still think the Grey Goose, at the end of the day, is a more impressive vehicle, easier to drive, and it's pretty. She's a whore. She's pretty. She loves taking her pictures. She looks good. You look at the Grey Goose, you're like, ah, another S197. You look at the Blue Goose, you're like, that bitch is bad. Um, Blue 99 says, orale bicho. Um, Jay Fine says, Alex, did you see the orange 202500, the HPJ built that is the fastest ever? Is that, <laughs> are you being funny or... Um, the quickest and fastest GT500 was, uh, is owned by Evolution. That went 9.1, uh, and it went 158 this weekend. That's a lot of mile an hour. HPJ's uh, customer is quick, but 9.1 is 9.1. Uh, Alex, did you say already got that? My Fox body slow, but looks good. No one cares. Um, how come S550s you have dropped the hood about one feet to have it closed? Pref uh, I prefer... Oh, where you can close the hood just by pushing the hood down. Matt Jones, what a weird question. My hood, I just go like this, boom, and it shuts. You don't have to drop it from a foot up. You just, boom, and it shuts. I don't know. Maybe you just need a little more forearm work. Do you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> um, RSG for me says, what's up, Alex? Uh, say it with me, Alex. Fix your fucking shit, people. Fix your fucking shit. 100%. Fix your shit. Uh, Thomas Okumbe says, I'm sorry, Ernie G says, I rarely drive my S550. Will having 85 in the tank give me any issues? Ah, just drive it at least once a week and you'll be okay. I don't think that's going to be that big of an issue. Uh, Thomas Okumbe says, channel support. Got a bone stock 18A10, but thinking about trading it in for a Hellcat or a GTR. Stick to building the Mustang or trade it in. Well, I don't know what you want to do. I don't know what you want to do. You want a roll race? You want a drag race? You want to put a turbo kit in it? Look, you put a turbo kit in the 18A10 and E85, you're going to be many modded Hellcats and a lot of GTRs, not all of them because they're they're easy to build and they make good power. But honestly, it all depends on what you want to do. If you want, look, you're going to get way more pussy with a GTR. You're going to get way more dick, way more dick. You're going to get so much dick in the Hellcat. Uh, the 18A10 Boost E85, it's going to run nines or potentially eights pretty easily. I swallow cum says, would you be more, would we be worried about the trans or the motor at a 900 to a thousand wheel? I can't afford to build both before March. Honestly, dude, the motor, the trans is going to slip. Look, you're going to need something to live at 900 wheel. You're going to need to upgrade the trans clutches 100%. You cannot go out there with a stock trans at 900 wheel and expect it to shift. And you can expect a motor that is bone stock made by Jose, uh, you know, at, just before lunch at the Ford plant. <laughs> To expect it to live at a thousand wheel for a decent amount of time. You got to pick your battles, bro. And that one looks like a losing battle. Phil says, people can't be happy for other people today. I don't get it. Pussies. Channel support, bitch. -o. It's not that they're not happy. I think people that criticize us that are our customers, they hang out with other people who are our competitors or maybe people that don't like us, but you know they have a mutual friend, but they don't like Lund. I got tuned by this guy and he's better. And then you're tuned by Lund and that guy tells you something that sounds right, even though it's never been proven, never been tested, never been verified, but it sounds right. So then the next time you want to pop off on some dumb shit, you pop off without proof to verify or one way or another, but you sound like you're in the conversation. And then other posts you make contradict that that comment you made and i'm like god damn it people are fuck. i hate people i fucking hate people why people are stupid they're really stupid they say dumb shit all of the time i love to just be left alone and let me go about my business but nope unfortunately i have to uh deal with people and they just uh <laughs> always um verify my, my my notion that most people are stupid 77 million people voted for joe biden i mean 10 million of them probably dead as fuck or voted three times. But that means more than half of the people that voted are fucking retarded. <laughs> uh, fucking retarded. Not just off base. Fucking retarded. 
Alex, which TVS do you recommend for a stock Gen 1? I wanted a VMP Gen 2R, but it's discontinued and no longer in stock. Dude, there's so many used kits, dude. You know how many VMPs are out there just used kits? The Gen 2, the Gen 2R. For the Gen 1, the Gen 2 is fine. I guarantee if you go on Classifieds, Coyote Trader, whatever the fuck, uh, Marketplace or whatever, you will find a used Gen 2 kit somewhere. So stick to the Gen 2 on a Gen 1 because anything past 700 wheel, you're just going to chuck a fucking rod anyway, brother. Kane Abernathy says, loaded the two new set, man. Trans break is beep. Much appreciated. Hey, Ken, no problem. All I did, I re-exported the file, Ken Abernathy. I'm happy you got it figured out. Now it's trans breaking and time to launch that turbo car at the track in second gear. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, I have a driver. It's coming. John Lund says, I have a driver. It's coming. Exactly. Matthew Goodall says, my current hero is Amish Kappa and his 183 mile an hour pass on the 6R80. It is pretty badass. That, that The S550 not only looks good, but it fucking flies. Good for him. JMS Media says, who do you suggest for a 6 already rebuild in Florida? Power by the hour, power by the hour, power by the hour. Um, well, Firth does tell Ice Wall to come that you have to build it at that level. 950 to 1,000, you got to build both. <clears throat> uh, Juan Dominguez says, should I add nitrous to my NA build? If so, what shot? You can go up to about a 150 if it's on the 85. If it's not on the 85, I want to stay at about 125 because the knock sensors really hate anything past 125. Hell, they sometimes hate 100. Um... Well, first, Wolf Earth answered my question. I love you, love you, love you. Matthew Goodall. Oh, my God. Look at these guys. Okay, Matthew Goodall says send it to midnight. Nothing wrong with them. Nothing wrong with them either. We're both, we're all, we're all friendly here. Um, F-150, SF-50 says the parts farm has Gen 2R kits available. There you go. Um, Mark, Raygor, F-150, SF-50 says the parts farm has Gen 2R kits available. Hit them up. <clears throat> T-Top GT says I'm the one with the Turbo Fox body locked in with the second gen VMP Coyote. I'm always on the t I'm I'm always on a tire whether drag radials or slicks so hooking is never an issue. Love both channels. First time checking catching it live. You're gonna gap the shit out of that TVS car. It's not even gonna be funny. People are gonna say like stop hitting him. He's already dead. He's already dead. Please stop hitting him. And that's how it's gonna look when you beat the shit out of that car. It's gonna be bad. Edo Martinez says Piche Mario Madrigal and Shrek. What's going on here? Okay, senior. I love my six R, but going glide has been crossing my mind. I mean, Edwin, look, if you want to race, Edwin, and you don't care about 6R80 specifically, yeah, 400 in a glide. It's going to go quicker. It has a more favorable starting line ratio. Why do we stick with a 6R80? Because we can. Because we can. 6R80, 4R200 hub. Don't get mad when that car goes a low, low 7. Low, low 7 with a 6R80. Ooh! And you know what people are going to say? They're going to say, well... It's not really a 6R80. You know, when we go 690s with it, oh, it's not really a 6R80. When we go 720s with it, oh, it's not really a 6R80. Okay. Meanwhile, they got a glide in their shit and they go, oh, you know. Like, okay, I was having this argument with somebody the other day. If an S550 <clears throat> has a solid rear axle, is it still an S550? If a Cobra... 03 to 04 Cobra has a solid rear axle. Is it still a Cobra? If a 6R80 car, Auto GT, has a glide in it, is it still, oh, what would you call it? What would you call it? An automatic if you're manually shifting it? It's one of those weird questions. If a GT500, a 2020 GT500, got a Turbo 400 in it and went eights, is it still a 2020 GT500? Yes! The trans doesn't dictate the car, neither does the rear end. Gordy Kemmerling says, Alex, I got a 2020 uh, A10 93 tune, digital dash. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My dash is digital, by the way. Um, maybe parent it, but have you seen the AFR and the dash be lazy? Dash, AFR, and pedal don't seem to correlate anyway. What does pedal and AFR have to do with each other? Tell me that, Gordy. Gordy. Tell me what does pedal and AFR have to do with each other. Also, injectors don't seem to shut off when the pedal is the pedal as often. <laughs> do me a favor. Take your digital dash and stop looking at the AFR and just drive the car. Just drive the car. Just drive the car. One more time. Just drive the car. Love you. Just drive the car. Albert Smith says, hey, Alex, how's the family? They're actually pretty good. Uh, what's the chassis qualifiers to beat the gray blue goose? Does it need to be a Mustang chassis that came with a coyote? No, 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 no. 
This is what I did. Look, if you got a 6R80 in anything, a top fuel dragster, if you got a 6R80 in anything and it is controlled by anything, you can say you have the fastest 6R80 equipped car on the planet, right? If you got a 6R80 in a go-kart and you're controlling it with a quick six somehow and you go faster than anyone else, quicker than anyone else, you got the 6R80 record. That's how I look at it. My Fairmont has a 6R80 with a 4 200 hub. If I go 748, I have the record for the quickest and fastest 6R80 equipped vehicle. It doesn't matter what chassis it came in. Eric Jefferson, 2021 Bronco or Jeep? Neither. Get a navigator. Go out in class looking like a Bronco or Jeep. What are you, 12 years old? Love you, Eric. 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 Is, er is it Eric? But your, your dad and mom decided to put an H at the end of it to be different? Like, uh, <laughs> like... I remember I went out with a girl. Her name was K-R-I-S-T-A-N. I said, Kristen? She goes, no, Kristan. <laughs> I was like, get your Kristan ass out of my car. Orby Alizer says, selling a Coyote 6 already swap VW bug for $15,000. Also channel support because love for the win. Thank you, Orby. And I think I've seen that, that uh, bug. It's a blue and front engine. Pretty bad as shit. Okay, okay, okay. Catch up, catch up with the peasant chat. All right. Insane Mustang. Hey, that 6R80 Super could beat the Grey Goose. It could. It could. If they can get it down the track, it's a 6R80. You got to give them props. They're the quickest and fastest 6R80, period. I get it. Now, we can then micro record it and say uh, factory control system 6R80, whatever. Ford equipped 6R80, whatever. But like Grannis became the quickest and fastest H pattern. T shifted car on the planet not import not anything 680 something uh fucking thing was unreal and that is the quickest and fastest h pattern stick shifted car anywhere grubworm was there he went seven oh but then he, he hurt the motor he hurt he hurt a sleeve <clears throat> eric jefferson he goes it's the german spelling of eric <laughs> but jefferson <laughs> but just, his last name's jefferson <laughs> <laughs> that's not german oh it's funny gordy camerling says thank you sir just what i need to hear appreciate the small roast <laughs> always paranoid i got you brother i got you edward martinez says so hub and billet internals yeah edward martinez hub and billet everything everything forward shaft one billet one way everything everything don't fuck around boss 302 or 11 12 gt 500 and why boss 302 because you can make more power with the boss 302 without modifying it 11 to 12 gt 500 you're pretty much stuck at 850 and it's not going to make any more power dakota made almost 1100 wheel on a stock bottom end boss 302 um dsm fury says i went out with a girl named erica <laughs> slow speed says you know john miller's car i don't know john miller's car John Law says, how about I put you in my right seat and run sixes, then you can have that. <laughs> Yomar says, Century or Whipple for quarter mile, Gen 2, 6R80. Uh, probably Whipple. You, easier done in a Whipple, honestly, out of those two. Um, or if you really want to go fast, you put a TVS in it. <laughs> fast Hippo ZL1 says, what happened to drag racing when men were men and not all the shit talking and betting on races? I bet no one here knows Bob Glidden, Warren Johnson, Don Garlitz, Joe Motto, Don the Snake. We all know Don the Snake, Perdome. <laughs> we all know those. But <laughs> is it Don the Snake, Perdome? Um, but now it's like betting, 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 betting. I think it's Street Outlaws. I think Street Outlaws did to drag, drag racing culture that, and again, not the individual guys, but the show, the way it was put out there by Discovery Channel. I think the show ruined drag racing just like fast and furious ruined street racing again the guys from street outlaws i have no issue with them they're legit racers but the show the way the show put it together and the way they made th it's just it's just like ah oh. and then now everybody's money races money this flagging starting procedures you know gap you gap this bet this bet that oh my god shut up and race i've raced my friends i just raced my friends because racing anyone else is a waste of time Ford More Performance says, at Wonder Racing LLC, have you seen my, have, have you sleeved my Gen 2 or build me something badass from scratch? Goal is 8, manual already, have BL Fab 8088, 4 triple system, ID 1700s, Magnum XL is the trans. Ford More Performance hitting up at Wonder Racing to see if they can build them a motor, and I'm pretty much sure that the answer is going to be yes. Um, Mark Dance says, 2.65 TVS Gen 2 Coyote 735 wheel. 
567 torque suspension setup recommendations tires i don't even know if it's a manual or an auto mark and i don't know what you're doing road racing drag racing i have no idea what you're doing matthew goodall says three dollars has had the same influence as fast and furious exactly exactly i remember i would get my um i'd get my fox body i had an 86 fox body piece of junk piece of junk I get paid, I put 355s in it, I race my friend. I beat him. He goes, gets paid, puts uh, 373s in it, his. He beats me. Then I go out and get some cams. And then, uh, get a cam, sorry, I get a cam and some a TFS top end package. Like a trick flow, uh, a trick flow intake, 65mm throttle body, CNL cold air, trick flow stage one a cam, and TFS twisted wedge heads. Right? Put, slap them bitches on. Because I did that kind of work. I fucked with small block Ford back in the day. Um, no tuning. We just go, oh, it's, it's, it's done. Beat him. And then we do that forever. Now it's not like that anymore. Now it's all secret. Now you talk shit online. Now your boys talk shit. That guy talks shit. The side bets are fucking stupid. The side bets, I bet you he jumped. I bet. And then the people try to do shit to fuck with the race. People flash their lights in your face. People start pointing at your door. Hey, your door's open. Your door. So you can look down so you miss the light. Fuck racing nowadays. Again, fuck that street shit nowadays. It is not quote unquote fair. If you want to race me, I'll be at the track and no one's going to fucking flash nothing in my face. I don't have to tell you that my starting line procedure is this. I don't have to do that. I just go, if the tree will tell me if I fucking red lit or if I, if I, if I, if I got, a, got a good light. Done. That street shit, I'm done with it. After seeing everything that's going on online with all this bullshit, chases a race. Chases a race. The fuck? We always raced uh, for bragging rights. Exactly. I don't race for money. I don't race for money because once you race for money, shit can go down real bad. Oh my God, who's Baja Cahura? He said, I got a Vortex 19 tuned by you guys and it's fast, but when I go to sport drag mode, there's no difference. Now, downshift, it's slow. Paja, paja. <laughs> paja in my Spanish is jerk off, right? Paja. Uh, if it's forced drag mode, you might not have downshift rev matching if it's an auto. When you force drag mode and you try to put it in sport mode and you paddle down, you won't have that downshift rev matching. If you want that back, you're going to have to live with the fact that the upshifts are not going to be as crisp then they would be with the drag mode tune, Paja Cajura. So if you're tuned by us, hit us up in the tuning queue. Say, hey, this is the problem I'm having. I want to have a tune where it has downshift rev matching and acts like normal and skips the gear so I can drive around. And I want to have a tune that sends it drag mode. But you can't daily on that, Paja. You're going to have to decide, this is my daily tune. This is my all-out tune. Got to decide. You can't have it all. Alex, can't tell you how much I've learned from listening to you and your show, RS3, for me. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that very much. That's what, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to be King Dingling. I'm trying to basically make it so that my guys and me and John and everyone, when the when you guys get a tune from us, I'm hoping that you've seen this show so that you have less questions, so that you're secure in, in your mind as to how the tuning process is going to go and that you're comfortable with it. And then, oh, shit, I'm not going to ask this question because Alex said this. That is wonderful when people say, I caught your show. I know what to do. I got a four level two, four innovations level two system, two pumps on. I got ID 1000s or 1050Xs, da, 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 just like you said. And we go, here you go. And by the third fucking log, you're done. Three. Boom, boom. That sometimes is done in one day if you're if you got a day off. I'm telling you. It's a pretty awesome platform to educate the public, and at least you don't have to ask ask, ask the questions 15, 15 times. If you watch my channel, you will learn something. You'll learn something. I don't know everything. I'm a fucking moron, but I have access to information, and I relay it to you guys to make your lives easier. <clears throat> Aldo Nava says, "For real, that's why we haven't we have." Having decently fast cars, slow speeds, pay attention to this stream. Okay. Chris, how much it costs to be your friend? Damn. Alex, I'm retarded. I just wanted you to be aware. Uh, aware of what? Uh, aware of what? What's happening? I don't have an entire crew in here. Okay. Aware of what? <laughs> I'm going to still have questions. Okay. Maybe I missed it. Sorry. Street Outlaws is turning into the WWF of drag racing. Yeah. Edward, Emmanuel Martinez says, ported 18 Manny or CJ Manifold for a 19 GT. Um... In my opinion, I wouldn't put a CJ Manifold on a Gen 3 unless you put cams in it. 
state comp stage twos or something. <clears throat> Yo, Mar, I'm loving your videos on the red card. Keep it up. Looking forward to some track runs. I'm going to try to go this Friday. I'm going to try to go this Friday to the track, Matthew Goodall. See if I can beat your 11-4. Because that red card gets it. I'm going to gut it. I'm going to put some E85 in it. Maybe about half a tank. And see if I can get that sucker uh, running. Better than 11-4. The weather's not that good here. It's hot and muggy and nasty. We just had a tropical storm. So I don't expect it to be that quick. Uh, I'm picking up a 17 F-150 with a 3.5 EcoBooster Saturday. And I'm excited to have it all around fun daily. Single full-time dad. Good for you, brother. Good for you for holding it down. I appreciate that. Here, and I had to compromise and still have a toy. Good for you, bro. Not only is it you holding it down being a single dad, but you, you're practical. You're not going to get a Mustang and your kids are going to sit in the back of, and that's the worst backseat. Try to have sex in the back of a Mustang. That sucks. Hey, Alex, you know what could cause a rough startup on cold start? It misfires and backfires for the first 10 seconds, then clears up, bone stock, nothing done to it. So uh, O2 sensor might do that because the O2 sensors don't turn on right away. When you turn on a Coyote, take a look at the AFR signal. Take a look at the short-term fuel turns if you have access to that live or just the AFR on the dash. Nothing moves until like 30 seconds. So I can't see anything. All I see is the cams moving. And I'm like, all right, the cams are doing this. But then all of a sudden, once your O2 start reading, see if one of them is lazy. And if you look at a log, you'll look at O2s kind of go like this. Right? And then if you have another one that does this, like, like a higher wave, that one's a little lazy. That one's kind of going, ooh, 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 when the other one is kind of being nice and slow. So if you have access to a data log, data log your idle, data log your startup, and look at one of the sensors. And if one is wigging out like this, high and low, and the other one is a smaller waves, then one of them is lazy. If both are doing this, both are okay. If both are doing this, you got other issues. Um, race for fun, race for bragging rights. Then y'all get together, shake hands, and talk about horsepower and cars and girls. That's it. Exactly. That is life. Aldo Nava says, hey, Alex, there was a grudge race here in San Antonio. Nitrous Fox gapped the twin turbo coyote bad from a dig. Uh, I believe it. <laughs> I believe it. Fox bodies, you just can't go. It's a fox body. Fox bodies can be anything. They can be two Jay-Z. They can have a fucking uh, Mitsubishi Eclipse motor. I forget what it's called. 4G, whatever the fuck. Um, you can have an LS. You can have a Coyote. You can have a small block Ford. You can have a small block Chevy. You can have a, a LS. You can have anything in a, in a Fox. So you just can't say a Fox body. Because if you think a Fox body means a small block Ford 302 with a B-cam and TFS heads, you're sadly mistaken. And even that with a 200 shot will gap the shit out of you. So you got to be careful racing fox bodies because you just never know what's under the hood. Scott N gave me 10 bucks. Didn't say a damn thing. Jared Stallworth said, hey, Zaddy, smiled at me. Um, and Blue 99, I would, I would say look at the O2 sensors. Look at the O2 sensors. See if one of them is lazy, acting up, and it's probably time to replace them. Alex, is it possible to explain how locking the cams and phasers are? I hear you mention this often, but I don't know what they do. So... A lot of high horsepower applications, really high horsepower applications, it's hard to control the phasing of the cams. You have a lot of boost going through the combustion chamber. You have a lot of a lot of tension on the on the on the valve train. And the phasers sometimes can't control the phasing of the cams exactly where we want them to. Sometimes they revert back to zero and they go, I can't quit. Um, and sometimes they're they're not going to the commanded position. So a lot of people lock the cams. Now, when you lock a cam on a coyote, don't think you can just lock them in their park position and you're going to be good. That's really stupid. Locking them in their park position is not where you should lock them. Again, Coyote Swap Forum guys, every know-it-all in the fucking forums. Locking cams on a Coyote is not smart to it, it's not smart to lock them in the parked position. You have to get with your tuner, your tuner, and he's going to suggest where to lock the cams because you're going to lock the cams at their optimal wide open throttle performance right? You're going to lock them where we think at wide open throttle, they perform best. Subsequently, it causes them to chop at idle. Yes, that high overlap position just happens to make them chop at idle. Blah, 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 blah. I heard that all weekend, rotaries. So you got to get with your tuner, whether we're tuning you and you got to have a guy that knows how to degree coyote cams. It is not easy. It's not just like, oh, just put it here, put it here and we're fucking done. No, no. You got to know what the hell you're doing. More than likely, you have to, there's trial and error. You have to try it a couple times, potentially. And if, depending on the phaser lockouts you get, when you crank them down, they might move sometimes in that slot. So 
locking the cams is favorable on high horsepower applications where the cam phasing could be a pain in the butt. 4G63, thank you very much, Diambo for life. Our 410 is a pain in the ass to two, and I'm having a problem with the car hitting the limit on the 1 2 shift. Basic bitch NA setup on 275 AT Street Pros. Cliff Hatcher, potentially. The 1 2 shift is a bugger. It comes by really, really fast. So, what we're going to have to do is do some data logging, and you're going to have to be patient with us because we're going to give you four or five tunes. We got to get the tire size right. We got to get the shift schedule right. We got to get the clutch fill time right. We got to get everything right so the 1 2 shift hits where it needs to, and it takes a couple of. Um, a couple of tries. I want some chop for my 13 DT500. <coughs> it's fully bolted on. Stock boost and lunt tune. What cams do you recommend? And these things really blow up at 800? Yes, Johnny boy. They blow up 8 to 850. At any time, it's the danger zone. Can you make 900 once or twice? Sure. Would I recommend it? Fuck no. You want chop? l &M NSR cams are king daddy. El Coyote and Aldo Nava are on the money. Uh, l &M NSR cams are on what's... Uh, G, uh, senior GT500, the uh, silver GT500, and most cams I recommend are those LM NSR. They just work. Yolo's girl says, Get with your tuner. She's right. She's right. That's Yolo's girl. You know what I'm saying? Johnny Boy says, Because I missed my Luntoon Coyote choppity choppity. I get it. I get it. I get it, brother. Nothing chops better than GT500s with stock mufflers and long tubes. Ooh, they sound so fucking good. Hey, I have a Gen 2 with an intake and exhaust. Should I get a loan tune on 93? I want to keep the intake and exhaust for a while. Save up for quality headers and a manifold. Yes, you should be able to get a, a tune. No problem as long as it's something that, you know, something that we, 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 we tune. Not some bobo intake that you made up yourself. I mean, we'll do that too if, if we know the, in, the, the diameter, the inside diameter size to be able to get you the best math curve we can. I think Eric Vega hit me up on Facebook. I don't know what's wrong with my YouTube account, but here's some support. Bendicion Pana says Eric Vega hit me up on Facebook. Gave me $5 on Facebook. What a guy. So I'll keep monitoring all the chats. I have like five windows open. This thing's going to explode. Um, that guy Marin runs those on his 800 rural horsepower GT500. Yes, he's from Houston, I think. El Coyote. I think I remember you saying something about the tune for cold starts on E85 in cold weather. Could I get that in my boosted Gen 3 because cold starts are rough right now? Yes, Will Firth. Hit us up. We'll throw some more crank fuel down your shit. Now, you might get a little more puffs of smoke because we're shoving fuel and ethanol does not like to ignite at 40 degrees. So, when you start up the car, you get a little puff of fuel. Don't freak the fuck out. A little puff of smoke. Don't freak the fuck out. We need more crank fuel to light that sucker up. Just hit us up. We'll get it done for you. F-150 S550 says, Alex, do you or anyone know if built XR80s have to be built often or rebuilt? The one in my red car was stout for two years. The one in my Fairmont has been in the car for two years. The one in the Grey Goose has been in for like three or four track sessions. The Blue Goose transmission broke when it had a bearing fail in the rear and it slammed the limiter and the trans broke. So technically that wasn't a rebuild thing. I think built transmissions, depending on horsepower level, should be refreshed every couple of years, in my opinion. I don't think you should you should go two, three years at a thousand wheel and expect the trans to run the same at that kind of power. Good refresh. Take it take it apart. Take a look at it every couple of years. Just like a race transmission. Even a turbo four hundred, maybe not. I'm not hundred percent sure on turbo four hundred, depending on what you get. But if you go to the track for a full season, you should take that trans out. Send it out and have it looked at. Why not? <clears throat> 4G63 have to run 80 PSI just to hang with coyotes. You're not wrong. Aldo Nava says my car isn't in town, but to pull up in the daily at slow speeds. Uh-oh, they're fucking finna gap each other. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I want to put a Coyote 6R80 in my 08 Crown Vic. My friends tell me just to get a newer car, a Dodge 392. But for the same money, I could buy someone stalled near complete Fox Project. I don't know. I, just care. I don't care about being fast. I just want something fun. Yeah. I, I'm lucky that I'm in a position where I can probably pick up someone's used project and finish it, be done, and then sell it and make some money, but enjoy it for a year or two. That's not a bad idea. I've thought about it. King Solis gave me five bucks and say a damn thing. So did Will Firth. Thank you very much. Appreciate you guys very much. Matt Jones. So Aaron Gregory just ran a 7 oh, 199 this past weekend. What do you run? Oh, wow. These people, these people talking some shit. I have a closed air intake lid. Came with the car, so I'm not sure if it's tune required. I don't think it has a tune, though. Is there any way to tell if it's tune required intake? Look up the part number. Honestly, look up the part number. If the part number requires, it says no 
ECU tune required or reprogramming required, it's a no tune intake, aka same size as stock. 302 Nightmare says, give me five bucks and says, I got a twin turbo Boss 302. At what horsepower range do I wear about valve flow or it'll be fine at 850 to 900? I think it'll be fine at 850 to 900. But it all depends. Do you have a blower? Do you have turbos? Turbos can, you know, depending on the kit, can cause back pressure issues and valve flow can come earlier than normal. Um, but I think at 850 and 900, you should be fine. Dakota was fine up until about 1,000. Then he upgraded his springs, put some badass cams in there, locked the cams and made way into 1,000, almost 1,100 if I'm not mistaken. Let me see if anyone hit me up on Facebook. Uh, why is Edwin Martinez asking for my PayPal? Man, you're good, Edwin Martinez. I love you. We're good, man. You don't, Edwin, you don't ever have to pay, bro. You're, every time I see your name, I, I, I try because I go right to it, brother. You don't need to pay me. I appreciate that. Just buy a shirt from Lund Racing. Buy a shirt from Lund Racing. And that's how you can support me and the channel. Buy buy a shirt from Lund Racing. You can support everyone at the same time. But I appreciate you, Eric. Uh, I'm sorry, Edwin. Eric, Edwin, whatever. <laughs> I rode a car where you have to drop the hood 12 inches for it to close. Even says it in the manual to do it. <laughs> well, if it says it in the manual, do it. The manual also tells you that you have a valet key that you can program but I'll be damned if anyone fucking knows that. And they're constantly hitting us up about it. Holy shit. Who has hit me up on the text? What's going on here? What's going on? Am I missing something? Why is Blue Goose not on this list? So, Senior, it's not on the list because I don't think that car has made a pass this year. Right? No. I don't, so, Senior wants to know why the Blue Goose is not on Justin Johnson's USA... S550 top 10 list. Now, the Blue Goose went 767, and it is not on here. But I wonder if they're going by this year. I don't know. You'd have to hit up Justin Johnson on this list. Again, who gives a fuck about lists? Senior, seriously, don't, don't, it's, probably, it's probably a 2020 list, someone said. But honestly, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, RSV for me says, are you on IG, Alex? I am, but I do not like giving it out all that much because people try to hit me up on it nonstop and I can't get back to everyone. So, uh, uh, YDBT for life at G, uh, YDBT for life. Uh, uh, that is my uh, IG. Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> so you have to make a pass within the year, apparently Hunter. Okay. So if you have, if you, wait a minute, blue goose. Oh, yeah, you're right. The last time Blue Goose made a pass was 2019 uh, World Cup. So technically, Blue Goose has not made a pass in 2020. So it does not go on that list. I get it. <clears throat> I keep getting this code for P P2096 Bank, Bank One Post Catalyst Fuel Trim System to lean. I replaced the O2, have nothing different, no idea, no leaks. Do you have a, a clogged catalytic converter? Do you have a catalytic converter on that side? If you do, it might be clogged up. <clears throat> King Yodi S550 or 550 says, watching with my daughter, she said, give him $1 less. Is that, is that a heart or is that less than three? <laughs> Thank you, King Yodi. And say hi to your daughter for me. She's not of age, is she? <laughs> <coughs> Darwin Gomez says, there's this guy on YouTube with S197. He's trying to figure out why his car is misfiring. He's on 93 VMP supercharged car. was misfiring before boost. Cold packs and spark plugs change. Has he done a crank relearn? Does he have a McLeod's clutch? Sometimes McLeod clutches are have a have an imbalance and they tend to cause misfires because when you do a crank relearn and you have a clutch that's not exactly balanced or flywheel that's not balanced properly, it'll the crank sensor will probably be like, this thing's all fucked up and it starts throwing misfire codes. So he's gonna have to check if his crank sensor is bad or if he has an unbalanced flywheel or clutch. I'm making sure that all the texts are taken care of. Yep. Okay. Uh, El Coyote says, Darwin, we already talked about this. Alex doesn't know Derek. I don't know. Who the fuck's Derek? <laughs> you want to run 11s, get a JLT intake tune and headers and tires. Okay. 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 You mean Derek? Okay. Okay. Derek Baron Productions, just in case anyone wants to know who he's talking about. I have no idea who the fuck you guys are talking about. Oh, you're talking about... The guy with the misfires? Yeah, I, I, I literally don't know anybody uh, on YouTube. I try not to know anybody on YouTube. <clears throat> Mr. 700 horsepower on pump gas. Oh, that homeboy? <laughs> that guy's a fucking trip. Wait, 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 wait. Matthew, good all. 
You're saying the guy that wanted to make 700 horsepower pump gas is having misfire codes? Is that what you're telling me? RSU for me says, I just followed you. Don't worry. I won't stalk you. Uh, 722 horsepower pump and 93 boosting. 93 boosting. <laughs> Go for it, buddy. All you. Um, no clue who that is, but fucking Derek. Uh, Jose Ibar says, you're tuning my Whipple F-150 and I can't wait to make big power. Great drivability as always. Awesome. Hey, thank Lund. Uh, we use uh, Lund's base files. All I do is give them to you and then we start tuning. Then we start tuning. Once I give you the base file and we start seeing what's happening, we start tuning. Um, a Coyote newbie here. I have a 2014 GT, a bone stock engine wise. Best engine setup for 1050 horsepower. What a, what a particular number. 1050 horsepower. I am wondering, I am wondering, a Gen 2 swap with pistons, rods, stock sleeves. How dumb is this? It's not dumb. A uh, thousand, I prefer you have sleeves. TKM short blocks make a thousand pretty easily, thousand wheel. Um, so even do, even so do illuminators. Some illuminators make well into a thousand in high compression illuminators, and it's not an issue. At that power level, I'd rather put studs in it and sleeve it and don't fuck around. Because why would you build it after having it apart and not sleeve it when it's right there to do so? Uh, King Yodi. So uh, she's a, she's she's four dickhead. <laughs> he says she's four. Why is she watching my show? I talk all this shit on this show. You're a bad parent. Um, I think it all, I said the same thing to him and he got all butthurt. Um, <laughs> Derek's a cool kid. Unlike that dude in blue. <laughs> he keeps, he, he loves the dude in blue. Oh, make VMPs made 700 horsepower. So you should make 700 horsepower and blows up. What happened? You happened. Cause we poor says slow speeds. Yeah. Unfortunately you can't read 93. Uh, I changed my oil to Walmart full synthetic. Can I get a retune? Made 1107 a high compression illuminator and twin turbos. Corey Leckby, twin turbos are just, they just fix everything. I mean, they, Dakota's motor is stock and it make almost 1100. Dakota's motor, Boss 302, is stock, the bottom end, and it made almost 1100 or just over 1100. Eric Vega says, I hope to meet y'all at Texas 2K. I'll be there to support the family member, but would love to finally meet y'all as long as I'm not in the way. Lunch for the win. HTFU, HTFU, head the fuck up. Hash brown the fuck up. Uh, okay. <laughs> Drew for sooner says, what does valve flow look like on a data log? Uh, 17 twin turbo GT about to put some pack one, two, three, four springs, but just curious. What am I looking at? Thanks for great content, Alex. So when you're looking at a data log and the short trims start to wig out, either they flatline or they go lean. It almost looks like a wave, right? When you're, it'll, the car will rev and you'll start seeing the short trims kind of wig out, meaning it is not a nice flat or at least semi-flat wave, they really start to wig out and RPM starts to wig out with it. And you look at AFR and AFR is jumpy. Now, it's not like, oh, that's a definite sign, but if you know how you're reading it and looking at it and you're looking at air load, air load is ridiculous, like 2.2, 2.3. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, man, your AFR is wigging out at 7,200 RPMs. I think you have valve float or back pressure issues causing that. And then they go, oh, okay. So a lot of people that have kits that have high back pressure, they experience valve float earlier. And instead of curing the back pressure, they say, well, get valve springs. So why not cure the back pressure and the valve springs? Food for thought. Pussy Pounder says, HTFU. Gave me $2. I love it. Um, I think it all, I think it all. HTFU, facts. <laughs> Hurry the fuck up. Exactly. Hurry the fuck up. That's a good one. KC526 might be on or something. But homeboy said head the fuck up was the, the saying. And I didn't make no fucking sense. Need the HDFU shirt with Shelby Dave. HDFU. I got to make it happen. I I'll talk to Vinyl Freaks and Company. They're really good and really receptive. But I want a shirt that's good for everybody. Uh, you know, if I want ideas for shirts, FBO is good. Um, some of the, uh, just the YDBT shirt, the YDBT hat. That's all good. Um, but like a Shelby specific, Shelby Dave specific shirt, that's kind of tough. <clears throat> Need an HTFU shirt with Shelby Dave. I already got that. But back pressure helps low and torque. Blarg. Yeah, so I've started hearing that. I've started hearing a lot of people that technically, yes, <laughs> but <laughs> high RPM, you know, there goes that. So, uh, you know, take care of the back pressure issue first. There's a lot of turbo kits that have back pressure issues. Tons of single kits that have back pressure issues. And the way to get around that apparently is either a huge downpipe or 
Valve Springs. <laughs> Alex, did you guys tune sleeve stroker cartridges with Boost? How much do they respond to Boost and RPM? Yes, we've done it all. We've done it all. We don't tune it any differently than any coyote. Uh, I don't go, oh, oh, whoa, it's a stroker and high compression? Well, let me just get the stroke. No, here, 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 here. Here's a tune. Oh, it works. Fuel trims are good. Go wide open. Go wide open to 7,000. Go wide open to 7,500. Add boost. Put E85. Go wide open to 7,000. Go wide open to 700. Bye! That's the process. Oh, it's a stroker. <clears throat> Would you like a U.S. flag on the side of something or other? And he's gone. And he's gone. And he's gone. Would you like a U.S. flag on the side of the FBO shirt? Would you like? Would like a U.S. flag on the side of the full bolt on FBO shirt? No, the FBO shirt should look like an FBI shirt. It should look like you're an FBI agent, and they don't have American flags on the side of their ship. Guys, I love you. The American flag doesn't belong on mufflers. Doesn't belong on an intake manifold. It belongs on a pole. Or a mod national sticker. <laughs> oh, let's put on my exhaust. Get your FBO shirts in time for the holidays. See the about section for details. Look at her go. Um, just kidding. I meant dups and free flow exhaust is about as free as it gets. Are FBO shirts available to buy now? Adrian B. Yes. Vinyl Freaks and Company should be able to help you out. Oh, coming at you. Watch HTFU, says Jared Bryant. Um, Hail Mary the fuck up. <laughs> Apparently, it's head the fuck up, but I don't understand that. That's not like English, like at all. If you were forced to binge watch Mustang Lifestyle or that dude in blue for 12 hours, who would you choose? That dude in blue. That dude in blue, for sure. Out of those two. I mean, it's 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 age or cancer. <laughs> so, give me cancer. <laughs> damn it, long, damn it, long show. Uh, not a long show. We talk about an hour and twenty six minutes. Uh, I'm gonna be giving it about an hour and a half. I like doing an hour and a half shows because obviously not everyone is killing it. Actually, the, the earnings are good. The viewership is over five hundred. It's it's a regular show. Hey Alex, I have an eleven GT five hundred. Uh, an eighty five and around here is eh, any option for flex fuel? No, there is no flex fuel option for GT five hundreds. Again, boosted cars do not get flex fuel options with Lund Tuning and Ford OEM applications. Support for KC526. She's moving that merch today. KC526 moved more than merch. She moves this bitch out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> get better, KC526. Get better. Get that knee Get that knee uh, good. I think she's going to be going home tomorrow from some knee surgery. Had a little stuff going on. But I got to get her moving because them knees got to work. Them knees got to work. You know what I'm saying? Some squat action. Ferrari guy Scott Schubel went 11 3 three years ago with E85 headers, 350 manifold, 315 gears in a manual. Awesome. Uh, I'm a vet, so put the flag everywhere. I get it. But really? Really? Like everywhere? It doesn't belong everywhere on clothing. I get it. Proud Patriot. But on an FBO shirt? Come on. Come on. What's your thoughts on David Van Voorhis single turbo setup? Oh my God, I've talked about it 500 times. It's great. It's awesome. He's awesome. He's excellent. And he's tall. <laughs> hey, Alex, what happens, what happens to douchebag? Haven't seen him in a while. <laughs> you won't see him. You'll see him once in a while when I talk shit, but you, I'm not going to make YOLO douchebag videos. YOLO douchebag videos didn't make me one fucking dime. Unless there's money to be made. I am not going to start acting like a fucking clown, drinking Mountain Dew and growing mullets so I can get paid. Fuck all that. He'll come out once in a while, but I'm not going to make specific Yellow Douchebag videos. Uh, Ford More Performance says, I keep my exhaust clean, bro. Uh, Johnny Perez says, Dave Van Voorst, the fucking man, 806, baby. <laughs> Why do people rep their zip code or area code? Area code. Why do you rep your area code? <laughs> <laughs> That's stupid. Oh, five six one. Well, oh, four one three. You're white. Be white. Act white. Alex, do the cobras still go wee? Uh, some now go whoosh because every fucking cobra I see that runs a goddamn number is turbo. Uh KC five twenty six says nice hat. Yes, this is. I bought five hats. I'm sorry, one to six hats from Lund Racing when I went up there. I said, I need five hats, and they gave me five. They gave me five. Give me a little discount on them. Boom, and I gave one to Perdomo and gave one to Mikey from Power by the Hour. Thank you very much, KC526. Um, Matt, 2011 GT gave me five bucks. Didn't say a goddamn thing. My favorite. 
Um, must Nastang eighty seven XX says because hoes in area codes. Get the fuck out of here. You just, just be white. Please be white. Stop it. Stop with the stop with the fucking repping your area code and you're white as fuck. What are you gonna say? What do you say? Crunk next? What were you gonna say? Like, <laughs> it's like it's like hip hop culture is like bleeding into the the, the white white world. <laughs> like I remember growing up, avocados were poor people food. Like poor people food, like you know the Haas Haas avocados, avocados, yeah, those are poor people food, poor people food. All of a sudden, it fucking high end, you know, avocado toast. <laughs> and I'm like, that's poor people food. All of a sudden, is high end to have avocados. The fuck out of here. Stop it. Three hundred three, bitch. Oh, two ten, bitch. Nine five six, a la verga, cut. Shit. <laughs> I'll always say that in a Mexican accent. Just be white. Hashtag JBAW. Hashtag JBW. Just be white. Just just be white. Please, just be white. Thank you. <laughs> Everyone's repping where the fuck they're from. Ooh, 956, huh? 40477. <laughs> what's uh what's uh Mike Jones's uh 331? Wait, wait, what the fuck was Mike Jones's phone number? Mike Jones would always say his fucking phone number. <laughs> 331. Wait, wait. Fuck, 861, 861 was Houston, 861, fuck, what the fuck's my, Mike Jones' uh, phone number, who, Mike Jones, Yolo, you should do a Yolo douchebag ripping on Shelby Dave, yeah, that, that'll go over real well, Danny Lee, let's leave the comedy to me, thank you very much, appreciate that, love you, avocado's good for the skin, <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> what is Mike Jones's, who the fuck, how come I got no, 281-330-8004, <laughs> Thank you very much. 281-330-8004. Mike Jones's phone number. Who? <laughs> and then Osis Coyote. 810-8004. Yo, man, you coming in too hot, man. Yo, you coming in too hot. And the way he said it, he was telling the guy that was coming in too hot, too hot. You know, like, yeah, you coming in too hot, man. See, you got to talk this two hoes. You're coming into ha! I need, yo, Vinyl Freaks and Company. I need to send you that video when the guy's like this on the trailer. You're coming into ha! <laughs> and then when they tell you, yo, you're coming into ha, man. Yo. I was like, oh my God, this video is wonderful. I love it. <laughs> Eric Holtz uh, oh, oh my god People are deleting shit Puro pinche 956 Cue a la verga No quema cue 847 505 Everyone give out their phone numbers <laughs> So on the live stream on the, on the replay Everyone's got your phone number Let's go Everyone give out the phone number So y'all can talk to each other That Cuban team member Everyone always got that one Loud ass Cuban team member Eso está de pinga And he's always the one in the back That bet $2 in the pot the pot was like 3800 bucks, and he put that $2, right? And he's like, yo, total de pinga, bro, ese cabrón tiró. La luz, la luz prendió, y la goma se estaba moviendo. Se está moviendo la goma, y ese cabrón la luz. And you're like, you got a Cuban team member, don't you? Es total de pinga, es total de pinga. <sighs> Fuck me. I hate street racing because of that. I hate it so much. All right, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get the fuck out of here. Um, I appreciate everyone that tuned in today. Um, glad to be back from Hail Mary Derby, a successful event. Jason Miller, great job, great job, uh, holding that event. He's gonna hold three next year, three Hail Mary Derbies, and he's also gonna do World Cup, and he's also gonna be prepping down at Texas 2K. Can't wait to get back on some of that prep. Congrats to Lund Racing for retaking the record. Congrats to Midnight, uh, for you know. I would congrat you know congratulate them again for Darren's car. Uh, congrats to the Paramount uh, Paramount Speed customer that went seven sixties this weekend with a Glide S five fifty. Tons tons of cars going sevens. Now that's one thing other shows won't copy about me. Talk about their customers that went sevens. That will not be copied because it has to happen first. <clears throat> um, Nam N A M B says missed my question. Where are you? Where are you? He goes oh I forgot four one three rep. What what 
What's the max power for four dual pump system can support with ID 1050s or ID 1300s on the 85? What power should I step up for a triple for those injectors? I've made 950 on a four double with the 85 and um, 1300 injectors. So you should be fine at about a thousand wheels, sir. Uh, and uh, he's a, he, and then he forgot he reps uh, 413. What, what? Uh, Johnny Boy says 281-330-8004. Call Mike Jones. That's on the low. Slow Speed says Twisted 500 is the widest in this chat. Uh, uh, homeboy said I missed his question. Puro 95 says, Cut a la verga. One mean 50 says, Tango says, Channel support. We'll be watching for that dating channel stream tomorrow. I will talk about shit tomorrow. Send it over here. We'll, we'll send it over and we'll see what we can do. And whoever wanted that flag on their shirt at US so we can make, oh, Colorado's, so we can make it happen for you. We love your military. Love it. Your military. Our military. How dare you? Anyway, that see, look at that. Vinyl Freaks and Company. That's why I work with them. They'll make shit happen. And uh, Johnny Boy says, 12 seconds fly. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, I'm going to get Vinyl Freaks and Company some uh, some artwork. See if we can get that guy in the trailer going like this. And it'll be like, you're coming in too hot. I, that's, let's make that a shirt. Let's make, let's make, that guy will love it. Cause that guy will be like, yo man, I'm famous now. Fuck it. All right, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you very much for everyone that tuned in. I will be releasing video this week. Guarantee. Again, my goal is to release two to three or maybe four videos a week. Red car, white car, Fairmont, fuel system. And something else that might be coming down this uh, this week or the week after, depending if I can get everything situated properly. I think you guys are going to seriously love the new acquisition that's going to be coming down the pipe. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. For those of you that follow the dating channel, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Talk to you later.